Okay, so first of all, I have a gun on the table. Um, I have three magazines loaded with snap caps. There's a bag of snap caps here. Uh, because I wanted to kind of demonstrate something. And so the first thing I'll do is I'll demonstrate that this gun is unloaded. So I'll unload the snap cap. Gun's unloaded. You should, if there's a round in there, you would see it. I don't, I don't stick my finger in, in chambers. If I don't see it, it's not there. Uh, there's nothing, there's no magazine in there, so it's not going to strip when I let the slide go forward. So, it's established that the gun is clear. So, again, I have three magazines. And each one of them had three mags. I've had three rounds in the gun, right? Uh, in the mag. So, if I strip that gun, it is it loaded? The assumption is yes, right? But how do you know? You don't. You assume, but you don't know if that slide stripped that round. Uh, what you know if it doesn't what's that indicative of that for me it i don't care because unless it's happening all the time it could be a multitude of issues it could be the fact that uh maybe the gun i mean that the mag didn't see isn't seated properly maybe there's something wrong with that magazine spring um maybe you know with some guns you have to rack them with authority in order for them you know it, them to work properly um, it could be an issue such as, you know, some people like to use the, the slide release instead of racking back with their, with their hand. Um, it could be a multitude of things, but in the end, I don't think it's a problem if it doesn't, if it's not repeatable. If it, if it happens once and then for the next three or 400 rounds, it doesn't happen. Um, to me, it's not an issue, but again, is the gun loaded or not? You don't know. The assumption is that there's a round in the chamber. So what happens is, what happens if I take this gun and let's pretend that those aren't snap caps, that that is a full mag, you know, of, of real ammo. And I have just loaded it and I'm getting ready to go out across town. I'm getting ready to go in the bad part of town, right? And something happens. And I draw the gun because I need it and I need to pull the trigger and I get a click. That's happened to me before. And I explained that in my press checks video, I explained two situations, one with Koleon Noir, where he was, he was videotaping a particular gun and the same thing happened to him where he pulled the trigger after he, he put a loaded mag in the gun. Uh, and sent the slide forward and it went click and he stopped and he talked about that so if you if you want to know more about about what i discussed in that video you go to the press checks video and i'll probably tag that at the end of this video so that you guys can immediately go in uh and and review that but the gist of it is is that the gun wasn't as ready as he thought it was and he didn't press check. And see, he said he gets a lot of flack from folks who, you know, who see that because they, you know, they associate it with, with the movies, you know, John Wick or whatever, right? Uh, and so they disdain it. And it's usually people who are set in their ways. You know, they've been shooting for 30 and 40 years. They're probably my age or older. Uh, they're unbending with everything that they do about firearms. There's only one way, their way or the highway. And uh, to me, that's wrong. Why is it wrong? Because there's always more than one way to do something. With the exception of maybe, you know, the, the, the firearm safety rules. Uh, so, so though, in my opinion, those are unbending. But everything else, there's more than one way to kind of go about doing things. So, just because you don't press check 
doesn't mean that other people shouldn't, especially if you can't prove otherwise that press checking is bad. If you do it the right way, you'll never have an issue. So again, I've shown this before in another video, but we'll do it again. Gun has snap caps in it. And normally what I'll do is because we're kind of, the camera's here, I'm, I can't press check in a normal fashion, but if you look at my gun here, each gun is different. Texturing, slide texturing, and slide serrations are going to be different across every type of gun. This is a uh, 1911. Uh, so it has the serrations here. So if I'm going to press check, I want to use these serrations. I do not recommend press checking on a smooth slide. Because if that slide gets away, uh, that could be a potential issue. Uh, now, another thing is when you press check, you want to make sure that your finger is away from that trigger and out of that trigger guard. Guns don't go off by themselves unless there's something faulty with the gun. So this is a Series 70 and it will go off if dropped, but we're not dropping it. So, uh, And it has to be dropped in a certain way. I do believe it has to be dropped right down on the nose and uh, pin inertia will force that that pin to contact the primer. So we're not doing that. So we shouldn't have an issue with that, right? So keep your finger out of the trigger guard and off of the trigger, you should be fine. And when you pull, when you check, do your press check, I'm doing this for demonstration purposes because my camera's here. Otherwise I'd be doing it close, close to me. I'd be doing it like this. And so you can't see the, the brass, but if I did the same thing over here, you should be able to see the brass. That's a press check. And you let go. All you're doing is you're pulling it back just far enough. You're pressing the gun forward while you're holding the slide. Just enough so that you can peek in there and see that there's brass. When there's brass, that's it. You only have to do it once. Whenever you're loading the whenever you've loaded the gun. Or whenever you suspect you've loaded the gun. So what's what's the big deal with that? I'm asking because I continue to see folks posting about asking if press checks are okay. It's usually new folks. And they're asking because they've already caught, caught flack from some older folks who've been, you know, in the game for a while. And, you know, they're catching flack for kind of wanting to know about press checks. Press checks are not bad. And if I, if you go and look at my press checks video and look through the comments, you'll see a multitude of, and I'm not, I'm not doing this to berate, berate anyone. I'm not pointing out any faults of anyone that made comments, but at the same time, I have to kind of say that I have seen exactly what people are, what I'm explaining. You can see it in the comments where people kind of say, well, I don't do it. Um, and they say, they say why, or they try to explain why, but it never, it's never explained in a fashion where it makes me want to not do press checks. And why do I say that? It's because I've actually been caught out, not in an actual self-defense situation, because I assume my gun was, was, was loaded, you know, at, you know, with one in the chamber when it wasn't. And it was during a training course, and the instructor was right beside me. He wanted to, he wanted me to kind of, he wanted to watch me do something that we kind of covered earlier in the class. And he he was walking down the line doing that for everyone because he wanted to make sure that everyone was kind of consuming the course material. So what he did was, he told me he was like, "Okay, your your gun is empty, you know, because it was locked back." Um, go ahead and uh, load and, and shoot. So what I did was uh, took a mag. Okay. Like that. Loaded one in. Popped one off. Or tried to. But when I, when I tried to, the gun went click. And I explained this all in another video, but it kind of 
I want to explain it again because I, I, I want to kind of make this a little bit more apparent, or make it a little bit more understandable. Uh, when when you load your gun and you make assumptions that 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 round that top round is stripped from the gun and into the chamber, you you're making an assumption. There are times where that 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 round might not strip. And so I've already said that Coley on the War did it in the middle of a different video. Of his own video, something that, you know, he wasn't trying to demonstrate that. It just happened out of the blue. I've seen it happen outside of this training course with me. And it happened in that training course. And it caught me out and it kind of, it sank home a little bit. And when I say that, it's because it didn't just happen to me when I was just at the range by myself, you know, just a casual, like, you know, I go to the range every other Sunday, right? Uh, and I pop shit off and, and, and learn from my mistakes and, and kind of, you know, do battle type drills and things like that. This was during a course with, a, a, you know, a 20 plus year uh, air marshal veteran sitting next to me as a trainer using my mishap as an example to the rest of the course so of course he used my mishap to kind of not to embarrass me but to kind of explain to the other people in the class why press checks were important so what i what did i do wrong i did not press check i did an assumption and we had already talked about that you know, at the beginning of the class, he's like, you should always press check. Uh, there's a couple of other, like, pre-courses where, you know, they build their courses on top of one another. And so the assumption is, is that if you've been to this course that I went to, you've attended the other ones. I did not attend, but I, I've been to other ones. So uh, at, at, at other uh, facilities, so I did not want to spend the money and walk through their their courses and stuff just to kind of get to the point of where, where I needed to be. Uh, so what I did was I kind of just made it, you know, I, I looked at their course material and I was like, okay, well, I've done this and this, let me do this course. And of course they let me in, you know, I told them I've been carrying and shooting a while. I was a military veteran, you know, I told them I've been to other courses and stuff. So I, I kind of got the meat of everything, but, um, I, I made the assumption that the gun was not what was loaded and it wasn't. Uh, so what, what, where does that put me in, you know, like if it was an actual septicant situation, uh, seconds count, right? When, when you're trying to defend yourself and you're, you know, trying to protect yourself from being you know, like, killed, unalived, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah, seconds count. And so with training, yeah, I would have maybe just racked it again, try and get the next round. If it still didn't work, just try it at, at another mag. You know, so there there are ways to kind of kind of mitigate that. But by then it's already happened and you've already wasted time. So I'm not saying that you should be press checking when, when you're trying to defend yourself. What I'm saying is, is that before you holster your gun, when you're prepping it after cleaning it and when you're prepping it, I don't know, after sh after shooting it at the range, you know, when I go to the range, I shoot self, you know, I shoot uh, FMJ, right? So what I do is I empty my carry gun of JHP, my carry ammo, and then I put, I put a uh, FMJ into that mag. And uh, when I'm done, I kind of do the reverse of that. When I'm done, at, you know, my brain session is over, I take my magazine and I put that JHP that I emptied at the beginning of the brain session, I put it back in the gun. Excuse me. I have indigestion. Um, and so that JHP, if I don't press check, I don't I don't really know if it stripped something. You know, I don't know if it stripped that that the ammo in there. So my my what I'm trying to say is, if you do it right, 
it takes all of just a second or two to check. Uh, and if you do it right, there's going to be no unsafe. I mean, you should be safe in everything you do with firearms. Doing a press check isn't going to going to mess that up. It's not going to mess it up. Um, it, it's stupid easy to kind of do a press check. Uh, and it's not taking away anything from you. It's not making you unsafe or anything like that. If someone's telling you that they have an, alter an ulterior motive, um, I don't just listen to what everyone says across the internet. No, I don't. Uh, because the coolest thing about the internet is the fact that there's a wealth of information. The worst thing about the internet is that there's an overabundance of information that may or may not be in the best interest to you. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, most folks nowadays should be cognizant of the fact that not everything that you see or hear on the internet is correct. Uh, so, you are your own person. You should be able to kind of determine whether or not press checks are for you. Uh, but keep in mind, if you decide not to do press checks, uh, I'm pretty sure sooner or later you're going to get caught out. I've been caught out already. Uh, and, and, and it's good that it happened during a training course. Uh, and I think that it, it hit home in the training course much more so than when it happened outside of the training course um, because I just brush it off whenever it would happen outside of training but then when you know I don't know you know it's like the safety factor for me the fact that I could have been in a gunfight and that shit happened uh, yeah that 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 did not sit well with me at all and I, uh, what I should have done was I should have had that same mindset when when it happened to me the first time before that training course uh, but, you know, sometimes you get just caught up in everyday life and you want to just go to the range and shoot and have fun, uh, not realizing that, okay, well, what just happened here is it should should have been a teachable moment, but, you know, in, in just the regular everyday life type thing, you know, you blow it off. But the fact that it happened and not only that, the instructor was there, um, he didn't make it a pain point, but yeah, it, there was a, a certain importance to me that the way that happened and the way he kind of conveyed it. Yeah, it was, it was, it was an awakeful moment. It, it woke me up. So again, you know, nothing wrong with accepting, uh, press checks. Uh, and, and I challenge, I challenge someone to tell me their reasons for not wanting to press check that are not subjective. You know, give me some objective data on why press checks are bad. Not subjective, not something that that uh, is anecdotal, uh, not something that you've heard Jim Bob's cousins sons nephew say something that you might have that you've experienced that kind of says okay well press checks are bad uh and and again i might or might not accept it but you know that's that's the choice of everyone that carries you know you carry your way there is no there's really no standard for anything uh, and, and for people to kind of just start trying to make their way the standard way and kind of making people feel bad about doing things their way, uh, that, that kind of sucks. That's not advocacy. Advocacy is trying to make things better for everyone. And it's not like I'm saying, you know, I've already said that the safety rules, that they're, they're concrete, right? Everything else. As long as you have those, those 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 safety rules in mind and you're abiding by them, everything else, anything goes. So so we are we are done. Uh, hopefully, 
someone can take something from this and this time this go around so we've already talked about this before uh, so I'll make this a print you know I'll name this press checks number two uh, and I'll try and link those two together I'll make sure that both of the videos are pointing to one another um, and again at the, at the end of this video you will see a link to that that first press check um, a video so that you guys can kind of view it if you haven't viewed it already but Really, it's. I want to, if if you if you need to take anything away from it, please take away this. None of this is concrete, with the exception of the core safety rules. You, you pick what you decide, and, and sometimes it's hard for new pe new people, but you pick what you decide works best for you in your situation because everyone's carry reasons are different, everyone's experience level is different. Um, there is no one that's kind of mapping any of this out for anyone. There should never be a standard for anyone because really this is our, this is, you know, whenever we're doing this, we're, we're exercising a right. There should be no kind of map out of how to exercise your right. Uh, we don't want anti-gunners doing that. We shouldn't be doing that amongst ourselves. So, uh, so yeah, you do it the way you feel is right. And feel free to change your mind later on. Uh, as you grow, you be, you become more cognizant of, of what you should be doing and what you shouldn't be doing. And you adjust. You adapt. Um, you don't, you know, just because you, you, you've been doing it five years one way doesn't mean that you can't change. You know, you change however it benefits, you know, if it benefits you greatly to make a certain adjustment, do it. It's It's you. You, it's you that that matters, not me, and not anyone else. But yeah, again, we're, we're done. We're done. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to be doing next. What I have been doing is I have been shooting this this gun. I did change out the barrel, uh, so it, now it is shooting nine millimeter ammo. Um, so the gun came with two barrels, uh, 22 TCM and nine millimeter so i've shot over a thousand of tcm through the gun uh mainly tcm 9r um but i wanted to give the nine a shot because it seems like i'm more accurate with the nine and i'm not sure why it could be a barrel issue um it could be i i, I don't know um it just seems like uh it's i'm better than i was in shooting i guess i should be in shooting thousand rounds of of 9R. Uh, I've improved a bit, but when I when I look at when I swap out the barrels and I compare the groupings between the 9R and, and 9mm, I am definitely more accurate and I'm grouping tighter with the 9mm and I'm not sure why. Uh, I'm thinking maybe because uh, the 9R has big bang and big flash and maybe I'm flinching. Uh, I, love, I love that round, but especially indoors that thing is uh yeah it, it, it if you're not used to it it can get to you and i thought i was used to it and probably not uh so so there is that um do i plan on putting another thousand rounds to it i could i mean kind of running out of options uh there are some guns that i haven't shot all that much in my uh collection um uh, and i might pick them up and try and get them into the thousand uh round club but it's not really important um maybe i can start focusing on uh the rifles and the pistols pistols that i have at ak pistols um it's been a while since i shot those i can pick those up again but if you guys got any ideas let me know um and yeah that's it